realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson.
Yes, he is working it out in your favor. Hallelujah. Guys, welcome to the Uplifted with Moses. Happy Saturday evening. I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. I am. You guys, I got to, I have just cried today. Today my baby went to the farm. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just a little emotional today. <laughs> but but anyways, I'm just so happy to be on today. Um, just excited about our program and what's about to happen. And just a few words of encouragement that God wants to encourage you on this evening. So first of all, you know, as always, we always have to give a shout out to Miss Kimmy Robinson. The CEO and founder of Elation Radio and Magazine, thank you for this platform. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you just for allowing us to speak truth and encourage the lives of other people. So thank you so much for that. So as always, again, we do open up with the word of prayer. We invoke the presence of God. So, Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you just for who you are, what you've done, what you are doing, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are working things out in our favor and for our good. And, God, we just honor you and we praise you today. We ask, God, whatever you have to share with your people on this evening, God, that they will receive it, that it will be a blessing to them blessing to their lives, and God, that their lives will never be the same. And we ask you all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I'm just I'm just so excited. So excited about here, being here. So excited about Uplifted with Mo. And just to encourage you. Oh, my God. Sometimes that's all people need are just words of encouragement. Uh, sometimes we can be going through situations in our lives, and we just it takes just one word from the Lord to make things okay in our lives. So tonight, that's just what, I, what I've been hearing, God. So he just wanted to encourage you, um, regardless of what you may be dealing with and what you've gone through, that he has not forgotten about you. And he has not forgotten about the promises that he has promised you. And as I was um, getting things together for um, tonight, he just kept saying, he said he's not a man that he shall lie. And he said that the promises of God are yea and amen. So I don't know what you have been standing in need of. I don't know what you've been standing in faith for. Don't know how long it's been. But God is letting you know it is going to happen. It is going to come to pass. And don't let the, allow the enemy to make you settle on something less than what God has promised you. So many times when we have been waiting for such a long time, we, we want to take the first thing smoking. We want to we want to take the first thing that it seems like uh, a glimpse of the promise. But you know what? God does not want us to have Ishmael's. He wants us to have the actual promise. The promise. And he wants us to know that the promise is available and he, he wants it for us. So he just wants to encourage you tonight not to give up on what he has spoken into your lives. Uh, don't give up on what you have been dreaming and hoping and believing God for because it's going to happen. See, God does not operate in time. Amen? God does not operate on time, in time, but he operates on his word. He says his word shall not return to him void, but it shall accomplish what it was sent forth to do. So God God does not sit back and play games with us. When he speaks a word to us and confirms it and, and tells us what he wants us to have, he does not, he's not like an Indian giver. You know how sometimes we say people, they'll give us something and then they'll take it back. God does not play with our emotions like that. Whatever he has spoken, whatever he has said, whatever his words are, they are true. Yea and amen means yes. And amen means it's confirmed. It is finished. It is done. There's no more, nothing else you need to add to it. Nothing else you need to add to it. And I I know that in, in life we, we can just go through the motions of life. 
and we can go through the things of life, and sometimes even what we're believing God for, we tend to put them on the back burner, or we try to just take them out of our minds and just believe that, okay, God, it's never going to happen. You know, I've been waiting 10 years, Lord. I've been waiting five years, Lord. I've been waiting four years, Lord, but it's not going to happen. And, you know, and I always, when I when I do words of encouragement, I like to share my, my testimony. And I like to share some of the things that God has been even dealing with me um, concerning um, his promise and not settling. So, I just turned 40 back in March. I think I let you guys know that. And I, I've been asking, I've been praying, I said, Lord, I want to be married. I, I'm ready to be married. I'm a wife, Lord. And, you know, God has spoken to me over and over again. He's like, daughter, it's going to happen. You're going to be married. You're going to have a husband. And it's like, now I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm 40 now. <laughs> Where the husband at? So, and even even in the midst of me believing God and in the midst of uh, me trusting him, I do have, like, it's like I'm in the dating phase now. So it's like sometimes some guys come and they resemble a, a glimpse of what I've been believing God for, but it is not the exact thing that God told me that I was going to have. So even sometimes in my own waiting and when certain certain guys come along, I have to remember that I cannot put my desire above his word. I have to put my desire under his word. His My desire has to be covered under the word of God because if I allow my desire to be married or whatever your desire is to be greater than what God has spoken, we will find ourselves walking in error. We will find ourselves getting something and getting into something that God did not ordain for our lives. And what we try to do, because we want it so bad. I didn't write a book on failed relationships for no reason, you guys, because we want it so bad. We were trying to dress it up and make it, make it seem like it was from God. When the whole time God was saying that, no, this is not what I promised you. He does not want us to have forfeited promises. He does not want us to have a, a fake promise. Amen? Something that we are imagining because our desire to have it so bad and so deep outweighs what God's word is. So, I, so I'm just like, okay, Lord. So he has even been showing me through this dating process and as certain guys come to my life and come in my life and it's like, okay, Lord, this may be the one. But then it turns out they're not the one. So when that happens, I have to put my desires on the back burner and say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you at your word that I am going to receive what you want me to receive. Not what I want, but what you want me to receive. Because they said the blessing of the Lord maketh us rich and it addeth no sorrow to it. It added no sorrow to it. So I just I just want to encourage you guys tonight to wait on God. The promise is still coming. And it's going to come when you least expect it, but it's coming. It's coming. I don't care if it's a financial breakthrough. I don't care if it is a new job or a husband or a wife or whatever you're waiting for, your child to be healed, healing in your own body. Whatever it is, just keep believing God. And then and God said in his word, he said, if you keep your your mind focused, stay zoned in on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. So one way to, to let us know when we begin to start um, doubting God's promises is when we don't have any peace. When we're just so anxious and we're so so stressed out about what we're standing and believing God is, that means we're, we're, we're not standing on him anymore. We are allowing that thing to overtake us and to consume us. But if we keep our mind stayed on God, keep our mind stayed on the one that made the promise, he said he's going to keep us in perfect peace, perfected peace. Amen? Amen. So, I mean, God wants us to stay in peace whilst we're waiting for him. While we are waiting for him, you know, we can still enjoy life. We can still have have a good time even as we're waiting on the promises of God. 
But God just wants us to stay focused on him, not to waver, not to settle, but just know that he is with us. He is with us. He's not left us. He has not forsaken us. He has not said that, oh, you can't have it. It's not going to happen. Those are the plans of the enemy. That's what the enemy is telling you. The enemy is trying to convince us that we have to receive something that's less than God's best. No, we do not. No, we do not. Even in society, we feel that sometimes the enemy will come and make us feel that we have to compromise, compromise our beliefs, compromise our values to get the promise. No, 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 no. All we have to do is stand on the word of God. For the word of God is a sure foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is a sure foundation. And I want to share this with you as well, because um, I do believe that sometimes in transparency, when we be, when we are able to be transparent with others, then that's how people can be blessed by our testimony. And even with, um, and I'm going to talk about relationships right now, because that, that's one of the areas that God deals with me the most, and he allows me to minister to people the most. But even in, in past relationships, I thought I had to compromise my values of giving up my body, right? I want you guys to hear me. Giving up my body to the man that said he was going to always love me and he was going to marry me and, you know, we just going to have three kids and, you know, our lives going to be all good and dandy. So after I compromised my values, knowing that's not what God was telling me to do, but I felt that I had to do it to keep this man, what ended up happening was the man went off and married somebody else. So when I'm telling you that we don't have to compromise our values but stand on the firm footing and foundation of God's word because God's word never changes. So what, like with God, like God, thank you, Lord. God is not a man that he is going to lie, right? So I'm not saying that the, the guys that I that I was with in relationships that I, I gave my body to, I had sex with, that they were lying, but it wasn't a firm foundation. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was not a firm foundation. So sometimes when we want something so bad, we, when we begin to compromise the word of God, when we begin to compromise what God has already instructed and told us to do based on the firm foundation and footing of his word, and we go, begin to go on that shaky ground, that's when we begin to sink. That's when we begin to lose our footing. That's, we, that's when we begin to move out of the way of the promises of God. Hallelujah. But God is telling us, and I don't, I don't even know who this may be for tonight, but God is telling us to stay firm on his word. Stay firm on his word. Hallelujah. His word will bring you through. Not only will his word bring you through, his word is going to bring you to. <laughs> it's going to bring you to what you have been asking and praying about. No other way is it going to come but through God's word. Yeah, if, if sometimes if we try to circumvent God's word and do things our way, we will get what we want, but we won't get the promise. I hope you guys are hearing me. It's, it's, it's more than us just getting. Um, it's, it's more than us just getting something that is like an image or something that is a resemblance of the promise. Hallelujah. The resemblance of the promise, it has, it, it turns. It, it's not, it's not sure. It, it has holes in it. It has things in it that, that was not really designed that with the promise, God knew that the promise was going to be perfect for us. Amen? And that's what God wants us to have. He wants us to have his promise. What he has promised us, I don't, like I said, I don't care what that may be, what you are standing in need of. Some of, some of you may be standing in need of, God, I need a job. God, I'm waiting and trusting and believing you for this new job, Lord. But you may have been waiting for a couple of months, and it just seemed like nothing has been coming through. But something 
may come and it may resemble the thing that God has told you to, the, that you are going to have, and you will be so anxious to take it. But something on the, in, on the inside of you is going to be telling you, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust God. Hallelujah. Because he is firm. He cannot waver. He cannot change his mind. He's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. To so just hear his voice and trust him. Trust him in this hour to know that his promises are real. And he still has those promises for us. He still has those promises for us. And those promises, those promises will, will lead us into something that is greater. But in the meantime, and this is what I'm hearing, in the meantime, while you are waiting on the promise, don't be so focused on the promise. Because when we begin to focus so much on what we want, we lose sight of what we need to be doing at the very moment. And hold, thank you, Jesus. And what we need to be doing at the very moment could be preparing us for the promise. So don't get so don't get so lost in translation of what you want and what you are believing God for. Just focus on Him. Focus on what He's telling you to do. And a lot of times we we as believers we make this thing harder than what it really should be. If we would just focus on God, we will begin to see the joy. We will begin to see the, the happiness of our lives. Because God, for one, for one, God wants to make sure that we have the right relationship with the thing that he is about to bless us with. God said he's a jealous God, and he said that we shouldn't have no other gods before him. So even as God is preparing us for the promise, he wants to make sure that we have the right relationship with the promise, that when it comes in, that we will not idolize it, that we will not put that thing before him. So even in the midst of us waiting for it, if we can train ourselves, if we can train ourselves to just focus on God, it's going to already be embedded in us that this is who we really need. I remember my um, apostle, uh, uh, my my former apostle. He would always he would minister to me, and he was he'd be like Minister Monique. God said that He is more than enough. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't wanted to have that. I'm like, look, God, I know you are more than enough, but I want to have this. <laughs> but it, it finally clicked what He was saying. That God is more than enough. That the things that I want do not compare to what I have when I have God. He is more than enough. So even even with that, when it finally clicked, when I finally got out of my emotions and got out of my flesh of what I wanted and began to attain unto that thing that God is more than enough, then I began to just focus more on God. And what he showed me, that he was more than enough. That even in my lonely times, he was more than enough. Even in the times where I felt weak, wanted to give in to temptation, hear me, guys, God was more than enough. So it's not that it was God that was more than enough, that that was all that I, that, that he, he, didn't, he didn't want me to have a husband or he didn't want me to have anything else. But he just wanted me to know that my sufficiency, all of my sufficiency was in him. So it's certain days in our lives and it's certain areas in our lives that we don't have a problem giving over to God. Some of us may not have a problem giving our finances over to God or our healing over to God or our children over to God. But we may have a problem giving our relationships over to God. We may have a problem giving our, you know, our heart over to God, whatever the case may be. But God wants us to know he wants us to trust him in every area of our lives because he is our sufficiency. He is our sufficiency, you guys. So whatever area we may be weak in, God's strength, 
Hallelujah. The strength of who God is will make us strong. It's not going to be the promise that's going to make you strong. It is the promise giver that will make you strong. So in this this period of waiting for what you have been believing God for, and some of you may be believing God for a financial breakthrough, God wants you to know that he is more than enough, more than enough. Stop allowing these bills to stress you out. Stop allowing what you see, what you feel is lack to start to keep you stressed out. Because God is letting you know right now he is more than enough. He is your sufficiency. He is your all in all. He will not allow you to go lacking. Trust him. Trust him. Everything that you need, God's got it. God's got it. I, I work for um, Palmetto Goodwill in North Charleston, South Carolina, and we have a program where we help uh, people that have been laid off from their job. And this one lady, she came into my office on Thursday, and her testimony blessed me so. Um, she she had um, she's forty. She was forty five years old. She lost her job about a year ago. She just had a baby, okay, you guys. So the job that she had, she was making $87,000 a year, okay. She actually had to take another job, a low-paying job, um, after she lost her job making $11 an hour. And she was telling me, she was like, Monique, how it was, she was just so stressed out because she didn't know how things was going to get paid, you know, going from making $87,000 a year to making $11 an hour. That is a big, big gap, especially when you are a um, new mom and all these other things at it. But what she said, bless my life, she said, but Monique, I'm still living in my house. She said the 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 bill the um the bill may not be paid on time all the time, but God is always on time when it needs to be paid. She said I still drive my car. I'm still living the same life that I was once living, from even when I was making eighty seven thousand dollars to eleven thousand eleven dollars an hour. Now, if that does not go to prove that God was her sufficiency, I don't know what else is. I don't know what else is. So it just blessed me to know that no matter what situation that we may be in, God can still make a way for us. Make a way for us. If you have some issues with your flesh, like, you know, with temptation, God can strengthen you in that area. But we have to give that to God. We have to give those needs. We got to give those feelings. We got to give those wants over to God. And he will prove to us. He said, prove to me. Prove me now. We have to to allow God to prove who he is in our lives. Instead, but what the enemy wants us to do, he wants us to cry, and he wants us to feel weak, and he wants us to feel defeated, that we will never overcome certain things in our lives, that we will never be victorious over the things that we believe we need to be victorious over. He's always going to try to come at us in that way to make us feel that we, we won't be able to do it. But we can't do it in our own strength. But if we rely on the strength of God and the Holy Spirit, God will make a way for us. He will do it for us. He will do it for us. And, you know, and I know as he is as He is doing it for me and as he has done it for me in the past and as he's done it for the young lady that came into our office, he's going to do it for you too. And I think that there's already some victories that God has already proven himself, that he's, he's brought you through. And sometimes when you get weak, remember those victories. Remember those things that God has brought you through. And if he did it before, he won't do it again. He is going to do it again, but he just wants to encourage your heart um, because, and, you know, I don't like giving any credit to the enemy, but the enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. We know that, right? And he kills, steals, and destroys by kind of trying to play in our emotions and play on our mind. And once we allow, give him a foothold in our mind, that's his playground. 
And that's the hardest place for us to get the enemy out is our mind. Our mind, that's when he begins to speak to us. And we, we begin, the more we focus on his voice and focus on the problem and focus on what we don't have and how long we've been waiting, that's where he wants to drift you off to. But God wants you to stay focused on him so you can stay in perfect peace, so he can order your footsteps, so he can lead and guide you to where he wants you to go. And he'd be like, okay, my, my child is getting closer and closer to her promise. She's getting closer, hallelujah, getting closer and closer to what I told her or I told him that was for them. That's what God wants. And it's an everyday battle. It is an everyday battle, you guys. We can't just, and it's just like a, a, a thing. It's like I will, I would love to sit up here and tell you, oh, if you just make this confession one time, that oh, everything's going to be hunky dory, the enemy's not going to come at you no more, and you're just going to be victorious, victorious, victorious. No, constantly. You have to constantly be before God. You have to constantly bind the devil and bind his voice and bind the things that he's trying to speak into your ear. You got to constantly bind him because he doesn't want, he doesn't want, he wants you to forfeit what God has for you. He doesn't want you to get it. He doesn't want you to have it. He is doomed, so he wants us to be doomed too. But no, let's fight for what God has promised us. We know it belongs to us, but let's fight for it. Not in the natural, excuse me, but we have to fight for it in the spirit with the word of God. And one of the things that God told me, and I encourage you guys to begin to do this too, find you some daily confessions. Sometimes if you're having trouble with fear or if you're having trouble with finances, find scriptures on Finances, find scriptures on fear, find scriptures on stress, find scriptures on whatever you may go through. And I know it may seem so simplistic, but it works. Every morning when, before your foot hits the floor, you get those daily confessions and you confess it. Confess it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Let it get into your spirit. And I promise you, you're going to begin to see the shift in your mindset. You're going to begin to see the shift in what you're focusing on, your perception of what is. You will begin to focus on the things of God and not the things on this world and the things that you, the things that you are minding. Because you, as you begin to focus on God, God's going to just go already show you that. Look, I'm taking care of your stuff. He cares. He cares about the things that concerns our lives. But he doesn't want us to stress and worry about it. He doesn't want us to, every, when we wake up in the morning, he doesn't want that to be the first thing on our minds. And when it does come to you, just like, Lord, I give this to you. God, I trust you. Lord, I know you're able. God, I know you're going to make a way. God, I know you said the promises of God are yea and amen. God, I know in your words you said you have not left me. You have not forsaken me, Lord. So, Lord, I lift my hands. I give you praise. God, I give you glory. And I promise you, as you begin to do that, as you begin to speak God's word and start declaring God's victory over your life, those burdens are going to be lifted. Those thoughts are going to begin to change. Those thoughts are going to begin to shift. And you will begin to see a shift in not only in your words, but in your life. In your life. In your life, our words are are like seeds that are being planted. And the more of God's word that we speak, God's word brings life. God's word brings fulfillment. God's word brings joy. God's word brings peace. And hallelujah, the more we begin to drop those seeds of God's word in the atmosphere and we're depositing it, hallelujah, and I, even though those words are coming out of us, we're still depositing it in us. We're depositing those words in us to filter out the words of the enemy. And as you begin to make those deposits daily, daily depositing God's word and those confirm, those um, affirmations and those um, confessions daily of God's word, you're going to begin to see the fruit of the word being multiplied in your life. 
being multiplied in your life, where people, they're just going to be drawn to the God, the what, what's coming up out of you, joy and peace. That's, that's what we want to have. Those are the things that God wants us to have. And those are the things that will even attract the thing that God wants us to have. So it's like, so so I remember I used to have such a hard time. It was just like being obedient. Like, okay, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. But not knowing that my obedience was not for God, but my obedience was for me. My obedience was for me to receive the promises of God. God doesn't want us to be obedient, disobedient because he is God and, you know, I'm God and you better listen to me. No, he does not operate like that. He wants us to be obedient because he is God. He is all-knowing and he wants us to be blessed. So that was a mind, a mindset shift that I had to endure and go through like, no, God, just, God isn't trying to control my life. God is trying to bless my life. <laughs> And some of and some of you, I don't know, maybe you're going through that same thing. You're having a hard time trusting God or you're having a hard time just really fully giving over to him. But when we begin to change our perspective of what it really means to submit to God and be obedient to him and to know that he just wants to bless our lives, we will begin to shift our thinking. God doesn't try to control us. God just wants to love us love on us, do great things for us, give us the things that he had already predestined for our lives, predestined for our lives. So he just, he really just wanted to encourage you all on tonight, um, just to, to hold on, don't give up, um, just know that the promise is, is coming, but just make sure your focus is on him. Don't focus on what you're waiting for, but focus on him. Focus on him, making sure that you have that right relationship with him and that you do not idolize the promise, that you do not want the promise more than you want him because he is more than enough. God is definitely more than enough. Well, you guys, I like I said, I just wanted to get on for a little while this is uplifted with Mo, so I just wanted to uplift and encourage you on tonight and just to let you know that God cares for you. God has your best interest at heart. He has not forgotten, and he has some great things in store for you. He really does have some great things in store for you. So we're going to pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you that your promises are yea and amen, that you have not forgotten about your people, that you, what you ever you have told us, whatever you have spoken to us, God, it shall come to pass, Lord God. Your word is not going to return void, Lord God. So, God, we ask now that you just help your people to focus on you, Lord God, that you will keep us all in perfect peace, Lord God. God, help us to not be wavering, God. Help us not to settle, God. Help us not to compromise your word, Lord God. But, God, comp don't even compromise what you have spoken to us, Father God, because you are our full, our firm foundation, our sure footing, Father God. So, God, we trust in you, Lord God. We put all of our confidence in you, Lord God. We put our confidence in nothing else but you, Father God, because we know once we trust you, Lord God, that you will have our back, Lord God, and you're not going to lie, you're not going to play games with us, Lord God, but you shall do exactly what you have promised us that you will do, Lord God. So, I got to ask that your people rest in the assurance of who you are, what you have spoken, and what you are going to do. God, I ask that you bless them, Father God, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord God. I pray, God, right now that you change their mindset, Lord that you do something different in their mindset, Lord God, that their mind, Father God, will be conformed to your ways, Lord God, that their mindset will be conformed to you, Lord Father God. God, that they will know which way to go. God, I pray that you order their steps. I pray that you give them direction, Lord God. I pray that you open up their blinded eyes, Lord God. God, whatever confused state or God, whatever situation that the enemy may have them in right now, Lord God, God, we bind him in the name of Jesus. Lord, because he gets no victory, Lord God. He gets no glory, Lord God. But God, I pray, God, that they will open up unto your Holy Spirit, Lord God. 
submit unto you, Father God, for you have great things in store and great things planned for their lives. And, Father, we ask you all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed these words of encouragement on tonight. This is your girl, Monique Walker. I am the host of the Uplifted with Mo Show, and we will definitely catch you on the next go-round. You guys have a blessed night. Say 